What's up everybody? My name is Miguel and today I'm doing my top 10 tips for charcoal grilling. Tip number one, don't use lighter fluid to light your charcoal. You get yourself one of these. This is a charcoal chimney. All you need to do is ball up some newspaper, about two sheets, put it underneath, charcoal in here, light her up, and you're set to go. Give it about 15 minutes and uh, you know, you should be ready. Oh, and while we're talking about charcoal, don't buy some of the fancy stuff. Don't buy anything that has, you know, some of that, you know, light, lighter stuff in it. Just the original things for it. That's all you need, man. No fancy stuff. Tip number two, clean your grill grate before you're gonna barbecue. And also oil it up. When it comes to cleaning your grill, you wanna buy yourself a brush like this. When that charcoal from the chimney is hot, put it in there, put your grate on top, start scrubbing. With those flames, it'll help clean it. I have here Kirkland cooking spray. Just spray it in there after you clean it. Tip number three, never ever use the same tongs for your raw meat and your cooked meats. So what I usually do is I have two pairs of tongs. So one of them I use to pull in the raw meat, and this one, the bigger ones, I use longer ones because sometimes those flames are really hot. I don't want to get my hands close to it. I don't want to get burned. So I use the long ones to start moving around that cooked meat. So don't mix up your tongs. Tip number four, use a two zone method. That will prevent you from overcooking your chicken or whatever you're cooking. So here's what I do. I put my charcoal on one side and on the other side, I keep it clean. So this is what I do. I sear the meat on this side and then I move it over to the other side. I cover the grill up and I, you know, it's like an oven. So it's gonna cook itself. The reason why you wanna do that is because if you leave the meat on top of the coals and you close her up, those temps are gonna reach really high temperatures, you're probably going to overcook your meat. Don't do that. Oh, and just a note about searing your meat. I know a lot of people will say, sear your meat because it'll seal in them juices. Well, I've done some reading on the internet and some of the guys that have been doing scientific testing or their own testing, let's just put it that way. Uh, they say that it actually comes out to the same weight whether you sear it or you don't. So, does it seal in juices? No but it does have a nice texture. So, you know, sear the meat on one side, throw it on the other side to cook it. I like a crispy texture on the outside and a nice tender, oh, juicy on the inside. Tip number five, learn how to use the vents to control the temperatures. Generally speaking, I always keep this one full open. And as far as the bottom one, I'll show you right now. So these are the vents at the bottom. The oxygen goes through here and then out the top vent. So here you can make an adjustment. Three blades on the inside, they're large ones. And as you move this, it closes and opens the holes to allow either more oxygen or less oxygen in there. Generally speaking, if you're doing low and slow, you're probably gonna wanna do it about half closed. But, you know, the general cooking, like with just about anything, I always, almost always, have it full open on the bottom and full open at the top. While we're on this subject, I also wanna give you a tip. I put the meat, like, under where this vent is at. So, the really hot heat it's gonna travel this way and it's gonna, you know, through the meat and it's gonna go out here. Now, if I had put the vent out here, my meat's gonna be sitting here and, and the heat's just gonna go straight out and it's not really going to cook it as fast. So, I always put the vent, this vent right here, going over the meat. Got it? Charcoal on this side, because I use two zone method all the time. Charcoal on this side, your meat is on this side. The heat's gonna go this way, out. So while we're on the topic of vents, um, don't keep opening your grill, man. Just put it in there, be confident. Look at your temp here, it's really high. I mean, let it do the work. 
don't constantly open your barrel all the time. You know, it's like um, over time you're gonna be a little bit more confident regarding how long it's gonna take. Use a timer, bro. It's like that is one of the things that I use. So I've already gotten a feel for how long certain things are gonna take. So like certain hot dogs, um, I'll be like 15 minutes. So in my head, you know, I'll, I'll set an alarm on my phone up for 15 minutes. And that way I know I'm not, not to keep opening and closing it, dude. Tip number six, rubs, marinades. They're very important. They give flavor to your meat. You really don't wanna skip out on this. Okay, so, you know, go to the store. I go to Costco, that's where I buy a lot of my, my stuff. Anywhere you want, you can even make your own. So rubs, I mean, you can, pre, you can get them pre-done or you can make them yourself. Uh, marinades, <laughs> this is the only thing I had in the house. Otherwise, I would actually show you something that I actually use. This is a, a gift from my friend. So with the marinades, um, I use like, for example, I think Laurie's has a steak and chop. I use that one for beef. So I put my meat in my Ziploc bag, drop in that marinade, put it in the fridge, and let it sit overnight. Never ever use the same marinade after you pull the chicken out. So let's say, for example, you had chicken in here, pull it out. That marinade, done. Trash. Tip number seven, use a meat thermometer, okay? So these are two types of meat thermometers. Let me show you, let's get a little bit closer. So this is one, and it actually has your safe temperatures. The reason why I'm saying use a meat thermometer is because you want to know at what temperature is poultry safe to eat, at what temperature is beef and pork. So know your safe temperatures, use your meat thermometer. The last thing you wanna do is to be feeding people raw meat or undercooked, that's, that's disgusting, you know? Uh, they will never forget that. Tip number eight, always have heavy duty aluminum foil on hand. Um, I know this is a Reynolds wrap, I'm not being sponsored or nothing like that by Reynolds. This is what I use, I have it at Costco. Uh, it's really great, heavy duty foil. There's a huge difference between the regular one and the heavy duty ones, and you will notice. Um, so, so what you wanna do is, uh, a lot of times like after your meat is cooked, you can use the, the wrap to wrap your meat. Uh, your temperature still rise maybe about like four degrees or so Fahrenheit after you wrap it after you pull it off the grill and that's just one of the many uses that heavy-duty aluminum foil has tip number nine know the difference between a briquette and lump coal, okay? Both of these are coals, but one is a briquette and one is, you know, this is lump out of wood. And the difference really is that if you wanna get a really high heat, fast high heat, use the lump. If you wanna get like, not too crazy of a heat, but you know, some consistency and a little bit longer as well, uh, you're gonna wanna use the briquettes. So for example, the these lump coals, you probably get like easily over 500 degree temperature on your grill. You know, and with this one, with the briquettes, uh, you're gonna get about a little bit over 400 degrees topping out. And they'll last a little bit longer. So you can get longer cook times with this. You can get hotter, not as long cook time, but definitely hotter. So you want that high heat, go for this, man. Tip number 10, it may sound like, you know, some kind of sponsorship, but really, Buy yourself a Weber, number 10. You really gotta get a Weber. I've used like cheap ones from Home Depot, like $40 ones, um, and they just, it's not the same. It's not the same engineering, you know, the design, the size, you know, it's like, there's a huge difference. So go ahead, you know, feel free if you wanna go buy the cheap ones, but also get yourself a Weber. I mean, this is, this is a 22 and a half inch grill, so it may run you about like $150 but it's definitely worth it. I've had this one for four years at this point and it's it's doing great and it's done me really, really good. And I love that it comes with a thermometer here on the side. If you don't have a temperature thermometer, you can also put one in the vents here. Um, but if, you know, definitely, you know, track the thermometer. Without the thermometer, you're kind of lost as far as where you're at with your grill and your tips.